I wore in the unboxing video because it was yesterday but today was a jumble day and I wanted to share with you some stuff that I got at the jumble sale this morning um, and also that I've just been picking up at like charity shops, thrift stores um, because I'm trying to wipe away something that is on my camera screen <laughs> so I'm a dumbass um, yeah, also stuff that I picked up while I was in Scotland, because in case you didn't know, I went to Bloody Scotland, uh, which is a crime writing festival up in Scotland. I went all the way to Stirling to read a three minute extract of my book. It was a great time. I got to see so many interesting talks and I got to buy so many books from so many great authors. I actually do have a clip uh, of, of me up on stage, so I might upload that at some point. But I, I also went charity shopping because I love a charity shop. Was slightly disappointed with the charity shops of Sterling, but there you go, you know, swing and you miss, you never know what you're going to find in a charity shop. But I have bought quite a lot of stuff recently. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you some stuff. And I'm also going to show you some clips in between of what the stuff looked like when I bought it versus what it looks like now, because I've done some like painting and makeovers and stuff. And I know not everyone is interested in watching the, the videos of, of that being done. So I just decided to do it this way and it would be more interesting. First up, I bought this in Sterling. It was in the Oxfam bookshop and Oxfam has like um, a religious section in their bookshops. It's nearly always Korans and Bibles. Like that's the thing I guess they get donated the most. It makes sense, but sometimes they have really good Wiccan or Pagan finds. Um, I once got, I think I did a video on it, um, this like quite rare book. It was like a fortune telling book. I sold that for you know significantly more than i paid for it but this one's staying with me for a while it's called hecate has sacred fires a unique collection of essays prose and artwork from around the world exploring the mysteries and sharing visions of the torch-bearing triple goddess of the crossword uh, crossroads and it has an introduction by sarita de este who i think has written a lot of books about hecate so i was really like blown away to find this i had a flick through it after i bought it but it is like um Essays, poetry, photography, pictures, um, artwork and stuff that people have done. Um, there's like prayers, you can see images of people's tattoos. I'd never seen this book before, I'd never heard about it or seen it online. So I was keen to, scary face, uh, keen to like have a look at it and um, you know, it, it seemed pretty interesting and new um it was 9.99 which is you know quite expensive for a book from a charity shop but the original price on the back is 24.99 so you know less than half price really thrilled with that bought it as soon as i could and carried around with me for the rest of the day because i always buy heavy things at the start of the day because i'm stupid so that was very exciting next up i bought this um i'm gonna show a clip but I bought that from a charity shop. It was 99p or a pound, can't remember, but I just bought it because I wanted to turn it into one of those palmistry hands that you see in TK Maxx every Halloween. And I was like, if I can turn it into that with just the paint I have on hand, you know, 99p, so much cheaper than buying it. And here is the finished item. So I did a, a paint job on it just with acrylic. The first paint job I did, I tried to paint it white and I was going over it with some pearlescent white and it just peeled off like a glove. So the second time I used a spray undercoat, which I think is meant for cars, but it worked. Uh, I painted it like a dark blue and then stippled on some metallics and some um, stars. Um, did this cuff, a nice metallic black with gold stars. And then on this side, I just Googled palmistry hand and found a picture that I thought I could duplicate. And then I drew it on with a gold Posca pen. And then the whole thing has since been varnished in Liquitex, um, which is quite sticky. Um, but after a couple of weeks, it does begin to lose its stickiness. Like when I put this down on a shelf and I try and pick it up the next day, it is slightly stuck. Um, so it's not like removing the paint or anything, but it is it just is sticking. Uh, but after a couple of weeks, that stickiness will go away and I'll be left with my, uh, my cute palmistry hand. So. I'm pretty chuffed with that. That was all with paint that I'd mixed up for that uh, cookie jar that you might have seen on my Instagram page that I painted in like a, a kind of night sky uh, gradient. So I was very happy with that. The next thing was 50p from a car boot sale. I'm going to show you a little clip of it now.
So that was a trinket box. It was very cruddy and I think it originally cream. It probably had something in the middle of the lid originally, but that had snapped off. I paid 50p for it because I thought I knew that I had a small quartz crystal point that would fit in that space. I thought I could glue that on there and paint it and it would look cool and witchy. And uh, here is the finished result, which I'm again really pleased with. Um, so this is the same trinket box. I've also painted the inside. You can see the lid went a little bit like weird and manky, but um, it's just kind of uneven paint on there, which I can't get rid of. Uh, but I undercoated it in like a dark grey, I think it's called Payne's Grey, and then I sponged over that with some pewter coloured acrylic and some silver to kind of give it this metallic pewter casket look. If I just take the top off. Um, the top part is literally I've hot glued the quartz crystal point in and then I've gone in with like silver paint on the hot glue so it kind of looks like uh, molten metal has been poured on for like a setting. And you might be able to see that there's like an iridescent kind of green shift to the crystal. Um, when I kind of thought about how I wanted it to look, I kind of pictured it as an amethyst. But I didn't have one. I didn't want to buy one just for this project. So I took some, um, some people are going to hate me for doing this. I took some iridescent nail polish and I mixed like four drops of it with a couple of drops of just a clear nail polish, like top coat or undercoat. And then I just used a paintbrush that I didn't care about to paint that onto the crystal so that it would have this kind of iridescent shift. And that also cleared up some of the chips and mix because it wasn't a crystal paint in the best condition. Uh, and it made it a lot shinier and a lot nicer to look at. And then I went over that again with Liquitex varnish. Um, some people are going to be annoyed that I painted a real crystal. I already know, but it, it's literally just the aesthetics and it was damaged already, so I, I don't care. So those are my like craft projects that I've done. And now I have some stuff to show you, which I'm going to do as a craft project. Uh, so you might remember, I think I have a video on this, making this storage jar that looked like a house into, it looked like a shop, into a witchy shop uh, with like witchy stuff and it has like tarot cards and stuff on it. I have a video about that way back. Um, but I've been looking for the rest of the set because I keep wax melts in that one and it is full. So I need, I need some more. And then we went charity shopping and I found this guy, um, which is... Another one of those storage jars, it's not from the same set, but they look reasonably similar. Uh, although these have like lower quality like mouldings, but pretty interesting. I liked all the greenery and the windows of the shutters. I thought I could paint that and that would look lovely next to my existing one. And it came as a set. So these were five pounds for the two. A little bit more pricey than I wanted to pay, but you know. It's fair enough. Uh, they've got some chips and lumps taken out of them at the bottom, but I can cover that with paint. And I don't really know what theme I'm going for. I'm kind of tempted to do that picture that you see online all the time of like the super goth house next to the super pink pretty house um, and do them as a pair like that. Um, or do one in kind of like oranges and pumpkins and one in sort of like a green kind of potion shop vibe. Or just stick with the like black and white kind of Tudor paint scheme that I had on the first one. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'm going to be painting these. It's like an ongoing project. I like doing things like that just like when I'm not writing, just to like de-stress. So I'll have those in the bank for when I feel like it. Last thing from the charity shops before we get on to the jumble sale. Um, I got this the other day in a charity shop, British Heart Foundation. Um, it is a sort of, it feels like resin. Um, but it's a, a sort of dancing hair plaque in a bronzy colour. This was a pound, uh, which is unusual because it was in British Heart Foundation, which is the most expensive charity shop aside from Oxfam. I don't know why, I don't know who says their prices, but their bric-a-brac is extortionate. Uh, but this was only a pound, so that might go into a witchy job lot to sell, or I might put it on a wall. I haven't decided yet, but I do really like it. So that was a good find. Uh, and then in the jumble sale today, I had a great time. Although some people apparently were just like filling up bags full of jumble 
and then leaving without paying which uh, a charity jumble sale a jumble sale especially like a jumble sale is so cheap i don't know who would do that but yeah that, that was a thing i spent maybe seven pounds sixty uh, so it was one pound to get in i spent like 260 on an ikea bag full of clothes like white stuff um edinburgh wool mill uh some ralph lauren like there was some really good stuff at that jumble sale and it was like 10 p each for clothes so i went ham i'm not going to show you all of those because that would be boring but i did get some brick a brick items and i think i paid one pound each for these things um about just because um i think i kind of overpaid when i first went in there because i didn't really know how low their prices were going to be but I'll start with the least impressive. It's a beeswax candle making kit. Uh, it's got um, uh, red, uh, sort of goldish, plain coloured and, and green um, beeswax sheets. Clearly it's been in a raffle at some point. It looks very old and it comes with wicks. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put this in a witchy box as like a craft activity that people could do or if I'm going to use them to make my own candles, but it's a great way to like make your own candles and eliminate waste. I always find candle making kits like club boot sales and jumble sales because people get them as presents and they just get rid of them. And usually they have like half the stuff left in them or all of the stuff and they're really cheap and, and easy to get hold of. I'd never seen these white sheets before though, so that was fun. Then we have this wine glass. It's enormous. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but it is handmade. Um, it's got like the little rough bit on the bottom from where it's been like spun on the stick thing. I know a lot about glass, obviously. Um, but I saw this and it looked like heavy and it's got like the bubbles in it and you can see like that it's handmade glass. And I thought that would be a great like chalice, even though I already have a chalice, but apparently I'm now collecting them. Um, and it's like nice and big and sturdy. It's the kind of wine glass that makes me wish that I drank wine. I would feel so sophisticated. Um, but, but sadly the only thing I could put in here would be like cider. So um, I don't know if I'm going to use it as like a chalice or if I'm going to use it as a wine glass or if I'm going to sell it as a chalice. It, it depends really. I'm going to have it in my room and kind of get used to it and acclimatise. It's kind of in the stranded colours which I'm enjoying. Um, and then we'll see what happens, but it is lovely, like thick glass. I just, you know, was really drawn to it, really enjoyed it. So the last thing I promised that didn't just break. That was just, <laughs> it, it just hit the edge of something. It's fine. The last thing is something I was very excited about. I nearly shoved a man to get this. I'm joking. I would never shove at Jumbles now. Although it is just, you know, a mosh pit for bargains. It's one of these, and I've wanted one of these for a while. Um, I did actually see one ages ago at a charity shop, um, but it didn't have the thing on top. It was just that, um, and I didn't buy it. And then later on, I regretted it. And I looked online on eBay, and they were like twenty pounds, and they were in America, so you had to pay like twenty pounds of shipping. And I was like, I'm not that committed. But I like it because it's like a little stove, um, and if this didn't have a lid on, it would look like a little cauldron. And I think the well, the idea is that you put a tea light in the little pan, it goes in there and then it heats up oil and water in the top part here, so it's like an oil burner. This one has a very um kind of mid two thousands like grape print on it. You know, like when you used to be able to get those like olive oil things and you'd have them with all your like IKEA stuff. It takes me back. Um so I'm not wild about it, but I have an eye on some black ceramic paint, which is on um, eBay. And I think I could get away with painting like the outside, not like this bit where the, the candle flame would obviously like go into the top part, but just just generally the outside and the pot. And it wouldn't be like a functional item in terms of using it as an oil burner. Um, but I think it would be very cute and I would like it. Maybe I could get away with not painting the bottom of this and then maybe it would be functional, but the guides on the paint say that once it's like baked and, you know, sealed and everything, um, it's dishwasher safe. So theoretically 
it might be able to stand up to being used with water in it. Uh, but I was so pleased to get that, I just wanted it to look like a little cauldron on a little um, kind of like log burner stove type thing. So I'm really excited to maybe paint that. Um, and I'm just so chuffed that I actually found one in the wild. So that was fun. So that's everything that I found. I am currently working on a what I have been buying video. I think I said that in the unboxing, but again, I am still waiting for some items to arrive because they're taking their sweet time, but you know, COVID, fuel shortages. It's basically medieval England here at the moment. Everything's coming by horse. So there we go. Um, I will be filming that at some point, hopefully in a different shirt. Uh, but in the meantime, let me know which is your favourite item that I, I've found and um, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a video of like craft projects or if you like just being shown like the befores and the afters without the intervening process because I know a lot of that is just like me painting and you don't even see the bits in between where I like accidentally scrape the acrylic paint because acrylic paint on a china object is like impossible like you breathe on it like you look at it wrong and it will just peel off and you'll have to like cover it up and it will stick to things and pull off and the nightmare that I had painting that first house jar and getting all the lines straight and I've just volunteered to do it on two more jars because I'm a masochist but <laughs> let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that process uh, and in the meantime don't forget to tag me as well on Instagram when you're like thrifting finds I'd be really interested to see that in the meantime, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!